All right. All right, we'll start. Let me call the uh, regular meeting of the city of uh, Holiday Island Council, uh, council meeting for uh, March 23rd, 2021. For the record, this is a rescheduling of the regular meeting that was postponed from the 16th. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wes, would you call the roll? Uh, yes. Council Member Dumas. Here. Council Member Holden. Here. Council Member Burgess. Here. Council Member Miller. Here. Council Member Fulton. Here. All present. All right, I declare a quorum. Is there any uh, questions about the agenda? Ken Mills to move, move to approve the agenda. Pat Elwood uh, seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the agenda is approved. We have minutes from the February 23rd, 2021 meeting. Are there any questions, comments, or corrections to the minutes? In section four, um, I confident it was recorded what I said, but I think it probably needs to change. The second sentence says ordinances must be posted at four public places and the right response should be five. I thought you corrected that. Yeah, that's been corrected. Okay. Yeah, yeah, found it. Okay, and found the next that. and the next line block both them uh box and it might be or posted or may be posted in local newspaper. The word is on the minutes is must. Very next one. Section four. It may be posted, or it, or or an or must be posted. Change the and to an or would be fine. What which line are we talking about? Okay. All right, any other corrections for the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion that they be approved as amended or corrected. So moved. Jerry Pittman. Made the motion. I'll second. Lynn Dumas seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes for 223 are approved. Uh, ceremonials rec as, uh, as, corrected. as corrected. As corrected. Ceremonials, recognitions, proclamations, and uh, memoriams. I uh, have some uh, proclamations here, I guess you could call. The first thing I would like to read is a press release that I sent out today. Um, it says, The newly incorporated town of Holiday Island was recently upgraded to a city of the second class. Holiday Island initially incorporated as a town in order to deal with the chicken and egg scenario. Holiday Island had a, a population sufficient to be a city of the second class at the time of incorporation. However, cities of the second class must elect council members by ward. Wards have to be established by ordinance by the city council. But since Holiday Island was not yet incorporated, there was no council to pass such an ordinance. Consequently, the members of the community who were pursuing incorporation were advised to incorporate as a town and elect council members at large 
then request an upgrade to the city from the Secretary of State, which has been done. The next step will be for the City Council to determine the proper ward boundaries and pass an ordinance establishing those wards. At the midterm election in 2022, a new council will be elected with two council members representing each ward. It is anticipated that Holiday Island will have three wards. This is just one more step in the extensive process of setting up a city from scratch. There's still a lot to do, but we're making significant progress. Signed by me. And uh, so, congratulations, we are now a city of the second class. Mm -hmm. All right, the other thing I wanted to do was to uh, um, make some official thank yous. Um, we have, we've had, what, how much in total have we received in donations? So, what did I say? It was 2,400, was it, in 25? Okay. So, we've, we've received about, let's round it off to $2,500 in donations from, um, a couple of, um, institutions and private citizens. I'm not going to read the names of the private individuals who donated because I haven't asked their permission to do so. Mr. Mayor, yes. I just received uh, an additional contribution tonight, so it's probably closer to 2600 Okay. Um, but I do want to read this, and I'd like to thank uh, Lynn Dumas, Council Member Dumas, for drafting this for me. Um, this is to Lawrence Blood, the High State District Manager, and to Drew Walker, the SunFest uh, Market Assistant Manager, uh, regarding Resolution 2021-018, a resolution adopting a policy for publishing, posting, and notification requirements for, uh, I missed another town, this should say town, uh, city of Holiday Island, Arkansas. Uh, the city of Holiday Island wishes to publicly thank the Holiday Island Suburban Improvement District Manager, Lawrence Blood, and the SunFest Markets Assistant Manager, Drew Walker, for granting the city permission to hang informational bulletin boards in order to keep our city residents informed about our ordinances and other regulatory actions. As a reminder, the five locations of the information boards are outside the entrance of the city office at 110 Woodsdale Drive, inside Sunfest Markets Cafe on the north wall, outside the entrance to the clubhouse ballroom, inside the entrance to the recreation center, and inside the High Sid boardroom at uh, 110 Woodsdale Drive. So uh, we would like to publicly acknowledge um, those two... Uh, did I say for donations? I started this all out by talking about you donations. Did. That's okay. And uh, I'm blaming it on my glasses. <laughs> In actuality, these are thank yous for um, allowing us to put up the bulletin boards. Moving on to thank yous for donations, um, Hi Ha made uh, a pretty significant uh, contribution to the city and then uh, several private individuals have made donations to the city that allowed us to cover our bills in the short term and um, buy some initial equipment to get started. Um, hopefully um, that'll tide us over until we start receiving our turn back money. Sorry for messing up who I was thanking about what, uh, but we have a lot of people to thank. Mr. Mayor. Uh, if I can also acknowledge a mess up that I did, uh, I don't think anyone got to hear your press release because I had the plug switched and so no one could hear what you were saying. All right. If you want so, to kind of repeat that or uh, summarize it or whatever you'd like to do, but it, um, it didn't, we, I think they started to hear when we were talking about those donations originally. Okay. The, for any members of the press that are on, they probably 
uh, got an email copy of it today, but uh, for other people, um, I won't reread the whole press release, but basically we're announcing that we were officially upgraded to um, a city of the second class uh, from an incorporated town. This is all uh, going according to our original plan when we incorporated as a town. Uh, we knew that in time we would request being upgraded to a city of the second class, which has happened. And now the next step for us is to establish ward boundaries for the next election. Okay, any other ceremonials, recognitions, proclamations, or in memoriam? Okay, um, moving on to reports then from standing committees. Linda, do you want to just give us a brief rundown on where we stand on all of our IT infrastructure? Uh, yes. Um, uh, we, uh, with regard to the website, uh, it's up to date with everything except for uh, the last four resolutions that we passed. And I think uh, as I had sent Wes a note saying maybe we would just wait until we got through tonight's meeting and get those included mm -hmm. also, and he can do it all at once, scanning them in. And uh, so, but everything else is out there. Uh, we, in the, since the last meeting, I believe we added the mayor's message section, uh, although Dan has not contributed a message yet. But <laughs> well, that, I was... <laughs> I was actually I'm I was sure waiting until coming. we got a, I upgraded. I knew we were close to being upgraded to a city. I know. So I, I wanted I was to. That too. I wanted to have a significant uh, something significant to pass on. So everybody's anxiously awaiting. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> and um, we also um, uh, we we have a FOIA page out there on the website, and after we get through tonight's meeting. The new FOIA information for everybody will be posted out there. And our YouTube channel is up to date with all of our meeting recordings and is available on the website, too. So you can get to it from the website. Uh, we got our phone system installed uh, Monday, March 15th, and it's all working. And uh, we have office phones hooked up. Uh, we had internet service installed that same day in our office space, and it's working fine. And if until we get computers, you know, if you bring a laptop in there, you can connect to the Wi-Fi. And um, we uh, we set up a virtual receptionist with our phone system, so if someone calls the new city numbers, they can be directed by a virtual receptionist if they don't know who they're calling or which number to call. And those numbers are now posted on all the social media sites and the website. So uh, they're available to everybody. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, got questions? Question. So on forms, when we list the city phone number, will it be that 8400 number? 8040. Yeah, that would be the city hall number, generic, gen general number to call. Okay. And then we have uh, contact information for each of us, including you and Dan, and you and Dan number is your new city number. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess for the record, I, I can give a Anybody that's listening, the, th the three phone numbers, they're pretty easy to remember, which is why I wrote them down and keep them in my wallet. <laughs> yeah. uh, the main number for the city is 479-379-8040. My number as mayor is 479-379-8041. And Wes's number as clerk is 
So you just have to, re if you can remember 479, the area code, the rest of it's pretty easy. Okay, and I have received a couple of calls, so the number is being used. Oh, and the good, the good part about it is because we went with the VOIP solution, uh, Dan and Wes get rung on their cell phones, their personal cell phones, when their numbers get dialed. So right. it makes it very convenient for them mm -hmm. to always be able to answer the phone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Just Anywhere, day or Anywhere night. Anywhere they are. <laughs> Linda, does the virtual uh, receptionist, can it direct it to a fax machine? No. No, okay. I mean, there is a fax capability, but I'm not sure if we have a, we don't, we're not planning on having a fax machine okay. yet. Okay. Uh, all right. So it's 3040, right? But there is supposed to be a fax capability 80, 80, 40. where you get it as a PDF in your email. And we might explore how to use that. Okay, I would like to, since this is the meeting of thank yous, I would really like to thank Linda for all the work she put in on this. Uh, she is a walking, talking IT department. And uh, if you take a look, if you haven't looked at it, take a look at the website. It's really fantastic. In fact, I... <laughs> I've got a, a compliment. Bruce Larson stopped me the other day and said how how uh, impressed he was with the website and all the information that's available on it. That's good. Okay, uh, under an, under special committees, this really wasn't a committee so much as just a project. But uh, everybody, I think, knows about Senate Bill 416, which was uh, put together by the Municipal League and the uh, State Department of Treasury and um, the uh, Arkansas Ge Geographical Information Service to allow the Treasury to use population estimates from GIS instead of the Census Bureau when that data isn't available from the Census Bureau. That's necessary for us to start getting our turn back money that bill has been passed by the House and the Senate and is sitting on Governor Hutchinson's desk waiting for his signature. So um, if anybody knows Governor Hutchinson personally, <laughs> give him a call and ask him to sign SB 416. It, <clears throat> am I correct? Or I think he only has five days to sign it, otherwise it becomes law automatically. That's what I think. Uh, it might be 10 days. No, I think I read I read it just recently, and I yeah. believe it's five. But no, it's probably bumping up on five days since I'm it's been passed. I'm thinking it is, yeah. But it could be he'll have signed it this afternoon. So. I'm sure he'll yeah. sign it. I mean, there's, well, there's no issue. He got it on the 18th, I think. It was sent to him. I don't know if it... it was sent, yeah, it he, was sent to him. On the 18th, I believe. It was passed on to him on the 18th. So. Yeah, it's probably only been like three business days since he's had yeah. it. Maybe four. Three. I think only three business days. Okay, moving on. Uh, there was no old business to Wait put on the agenda. Hey, you skipped putting up posting bulletin boards. Is that, you're not going to talk about that? Um, Special standing committees? You didn't print off the latest copy of the agenda, I guess. Oh, you took that but, off? Yeah, but he, re he read me. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, yeah. I took that off because of the uh, thank you for allowing us to put up the bulletin boards. Okay. But okay. Lynn uh, put up the bulletin boards this morning, and I went along as his helper. You got it, what? Huh? There's one. I saw, I, I it's saw five that. Days. I just it, up. it is five days. I see it. Right. You're right, Linda. It is five days. I just looked it up. So we're good. Unless the only thing that could derail us on that is if he vetoes it for some reason. All right. New business uh, ordinance ORD 2021-001, appointing city attorney and. 
get my notes here. Can I have a motion to put this on the floor for consideration? Make a motion that we put Ordinance 2021-001 for consideration. Ken Mills made the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Linda Graves seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Wes, you want to read the ordinance? Sure. Ordinance number 2021-001, an ordinance for appointing a city attorney for the city of Holiday Island, Arkansas. Whereas section 1442.112 of the Arkansas Code of 2020 annotated provides that cities of the second class may by ordinance establish that the office of city attorney will be appointed. And whereas... Hold, it, hold up a second. Oh, 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 what are we doing here? Somebody's got their TV on. Oh. I gotta be, I'm trying to mute them right now. Okay. Okay. All right, do you want to go back a few sentences and okay. continue? Okay, I'll start with the whereases. Okay. Whereas section 1442.112 of the Arkansas Code of 2020 annotated provides that cities of the second class may by ordinance establish that the office of city attorney will be appointed. And whereas the city council has determined that it is in the best interest of the city of Holiday Island that the office of city attorney be an appointed office. Now, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Holiday Island, Arkansas, that section one, the qualifications, election, and term of office of city attorney shall be as provided by state law and effective immediately that the office of the city attorney of the city of Holiday Island, Arkansas shall be an appointed office. The city attorney shall be permitted to engage in the private practice of law during his term of office. Section 2. The appointment of the city attorney shall be made by the mayor with a majority vote of the members of the city council. Said appointment shall be on an annual basis starting in 2021, running January 1 through December 31. Section 3. The person so appointed shall have the duties as prescribed by Arkansas law and such other duties as may be prescribed by proper ordinance of the city council. Section 4. The city council recognizes the need for representation and advice regarding legal matters for the city of Holiday Island, Arkansas, and finds that the appointment of a city attorney will best ensure the town a, a manner in which to provide for continuous and competent representation. The City Council finds that this ordinance is required to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens and government of the City of Holiday Island, Arkansas. Therefore, an emergency is hereby declared to exist, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage and posting as required by law. Passed and approved by the City Council of Holiday Island, Arkansas on the date of 03-23-2021. Okay. Um, I uh, noticed while you were reading that I missed a town again. In, the, uh, in Section 4, uh, the... Uh, Third line down, town should read city. Okay. I, uh, I thought it. I got them all up to date. But, I missed uh, it when I read it, too. Okay. Um, after we consider this ordinance, um, well, I guess we could probably do it now. I can, I'll call for discussion on the ordinance, and Ken can brief everyone on... Uh, the process, I guess, that we went through to, okay. or do we want to wait on that until we 
discuss actually appointing, you know, who we're going to appoint. I think that would be relative to who we're going to, who you are going to appoint. Okay. Uh, this is this is just the process of saying that we're going to have an appointed attorney rather than an elected. Okay. Agreed. So, is there any discussion on this ordinance? If not, I'll call for a vote. Yes. Okay. Do we need a motion? Uh, we need a motion to I'll approve move it. to approve ordinance twenty twenty one dash oh oh one. Linda Graves made the motion to approve ordinance twenty twenty one dash oh oh one. Jerry Pittman seconded it. Any further discussion? Wes, you want to call the roll? Yes. Councilmember Graves. Aye. Councilmember Mills. Aye. Councilmember Pittman. Aye. Councilmember Dumas. Aye. Councilmember Elwood. Aye. Okay. All in favor. Hearing no uh, no uh, opposing uh, votes, the ordinance passes. Uh, and uh, since we have the posting locations up now, uh, we will make the one correction from, of town to city, as we discussed, and then uh, post this ordinance for the prescribed amount of time. And at the next meeting, I'm sure we will be in a position to discuss um, who we recommend appointing and get the council approval on making that appointment. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think ordinances have to be posted in all five locations, right? That's correct. You'll find the instructions in the resolution 2117. Okay. Okay, that went fast. Next thing on the agenda is... Uh, Wes did get some information from the Municipal League on what uh, membership costs are, and I thought it would be appropriate to have a little discussion tonight about that, and then uh, in preparation for having a resolution ready for the next meeting where we would actually approve joining the Municipal League. So, Wes? Okay. Yes, I had received this information from the Municipal League, uh, their, their basic membership is $40 plus 35 cents per capita. And they're, for per capita, they are using the estimate from GIS, which I believe was 2260. 2260. Um, 2260. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that comes to $831. So that is the base membership. And that includes uh, subscriptions to the city and town magazine for each of the elected officials and department heads, as well as the uh, National League of Cities membership. And then as an option, uh, there is a Municipal League Defense Fund which is basically like liability insurance. That is a dollar twenty-five per capita, uh, and that's based on the loss experience of the participant. Well, in our case, we have no loss experience, so I guess they've um, uh, elected to use the dollar twenty-five. So that comes to two thousand eight twenty-five. Um, now. And that uh, provision, the legalist defense fund, is only available to the cities and towns participating in the um, Municipal League defense program. Uh, this, that provides members with drug and alcohol testing of employees with a CDL 
of which we have none, um, as well as financial protection and an attorney in various types of litigation, uh, subject to the terms of the defense program. So that is 2008-25. So the combination of uh, the base dues and the defense program comes to a total of 3656 Say what? Is the defense fund and the defense pro two different programs? Um, no, I okay. don't think so. Can, can we get a copy of the... You're talking about the terms of the defense. I would program. I'd like to know what those are. Oh, you've got one. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, that's I money. I have not reviewed it. That's money well spent. Well, I didn't. No, I'm not denying that it may be money well spent. I know. It, still it, like that's the one it. where they furnish law, lawyers for any civil suits that are filed against us. Plus, yes. they, they participate in, in payment of any settlements. Our cap would our cap would be three thousand dollars on any lawsuit. Yeah, that um, was, that's a no brainer. I've read some of this. I'd have to go back and look at it again as to I, I got if you, you are sued how it works. Mm -hmm. okay, can can we get can we ask the municipal league, will they send me one of those or do you have extras or I would imagine. Yeah, I'll get one. Ken, me. what what was the per capita, the base rate? Uh, which one? Cents or which oh. one? The, the very five. first number. The thirty-five cents. Thirty-five cents. Thir yeah, and thirty-five cents. Defense fund was a buck and a quarter. And the that defense that. is a dollar twenty-five. Oh, a dollar twenty-five. And the total then is thirty-six hundred. Is that what you're saying? Three thousand six fifty-six. Okay. Then there's an uh, an optional an. Um, non-CDL employee drug testing program, but we don't have any non-CDL employees. So uh, we could, that would be $452. That's 20 so, cents. Uh, uh, liability insurance, do we need any of the... Okay. No. No, not really. We You've would not, municipal immunity this We day. would not purchase liability insurance. At least that's on our understanding. Is you can, no. but I what it amounts to is if you get sued, then Well this would probably get this would probably get us everything we need to start right. with. You know, you've got the statutory immunity too. Yeah, I know. Tort immunity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I thought when, when, when I was on the VOC, I thought we had some kind of, that was the only program we, all our stuff was with the uh, municipal league, insurance was, and stuff was with the municipal league initially. And I thought there was some kind of liability for individuals, but it, that, I'm fine without it. I think what we were told, if we would have our own insurance, Say if we had a, a million dollar liability policy, if we got sued, then the liability policy would pay the million bucks. Yeah. Okay. If you got sued for that much, because then under the immunity provisions, the litigant could well, let's, get the yeah, insurance I'm, proceeds. I, yeah, I, I'm satisfied with those two programs. I think that's what most towns or cities our size uh, do. That's a, and that gives us access to their attorneys for guidance and stuff. Mm -hmm. We know what they're doing on this kind yeah. of stuff. We've already got $10,000 worth of work out of those people for free. I spent a long time on the phone with Lanny and I'm convinced that this is going to take care of almost everything. So yeah. Mr. Mayor, yes, how does this coverage through the Municipal League um, conflict or support or tie in with our city attorney's fees? Um, it really doesn't. Okay. I mean, it, so we, the, they would, they would, if we were sued, they would be responsible for the defense. But as I understand it, they would also consult with 
our attorney. Okay. I'm and thinking along the, the natural lines of doing business on getting uh, legal decisions or opinions on ordinances that we're contemplating, that kind of thing. Did that go through Municipal League or does it go through our no. city attorney? No, it would go through our That's attorney. through our attorney. Okay. okay. The, the purpose of our attorney is to keep us from getting sued. Okay. <laughs> the purpose of the Municipal League is to defend us if we do get sued. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, we'll uh, we'll have a resolution ready to uh, to uh, pass at the next meeting. Um, there, the municipal league themselves has been doing anything and everything we needed without asking for a, for a thing, and uh, we were even talked about in some of their Zoom meetings as being the uh, Arkansas's newest city and the newest member to the Municipal League. And um, so they're happy to have us. They're in no, no rush to get this money. It's more, I'm more of a, in a rush to have the liability umbrella. So I think we should, as soon as we can afford it, I think we need to go ahead and do this. But they are, as you said, they are treating us as members. Yes, they are. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um, moving on then to resolution 2021-009, a resolution authorizing uh, me to engage in a contract for office space with the district. Uh, do I have a motion to put this resolution on the floor for consideration? Make a motion we place uh, resolution 2021-009 on the floor for consideration. Ken Mills made the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Pat Elwood is seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Wes, would you read the resolution? Yes, just in the chair. Okay. Resolution number 2021-009. A resolution authorizing the city of Holiday Island to contract for office space. Whereas the city of Holiday Island has been recently incorporated, and whereas the city will need office space from which to conduct city business, now be it resolved by the City Council of Holiday Island that the mayor is authorized to negotiate a contract with the Holiday Island Suburban Improvement and the should be district. district for office space, administrative assistance, and the use of the boardroom for conducting public meetings. The contracts must be approved by the City Council before signing passed and approved by the City Council of Holiday Island, Arkansas on the estate of 03-23-2021. Okay, do we have any discussion on the resolution? I did uh, email out uh, a copy of the proposed agreement again this afternoon for everybody to review and refresh your memory. Um, this was considered at the high sit meeting and has been accepted by the uh, Board of Commissioners. So uh, we're good on their end if we're good on our end. Make, make a motion that we approve the re resolution 2021-009. We, Ken Mills made a motion to pass to accept the resolution. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Wes, you want to call the roll? Yes. Council Member Pittman? Uh, yes. Council Member Dumas? Yes. Council Member Elwood? Yes. Council Member Graves? Yes. Council Member Mills? Yes. All in favor, Mr. Mayor. Okay, the resolution is passed, uh, which brings me to part two of that then, 
and that's approving the contract itself so that I can go ahead and, and uh, consummate this with uh, Lawrence and uh, move into our office space and start uh, getting, uh, getting ourselves set up. Basically, the total monthly um, payment would be $1,212, and that is uh, 500, that breaks down as $520 for um, 612 square feet of office space, uh, common uh, $300 for use of common areas like the boardroom, uh, restrooms and parking, uh, $150 for utilities, $42 for water, and uh, $200 for uh, janitorial service, which brings the monthly total to $1,212. We're, this won't be a resolution or anything. I just need a motion and a second and a vote on approving this. Make a contract. motion that we approve, uh, give, um, give the, the mayor the authority to sign the contract as negotiated. Okay, Ken Mills made a motion to approve the uh, contract as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second. Lynn Dumas seconded it. Any further discussion? I, I, Mr. Mayor, yes. I have one question. Uh, the $300 a month for parking, I mean, what what is that by? It says no reserve spaces for the city. I mean, well, the $300 isn't just for parking. It's for the boardroom, for using the boardroom, which we'll be using for for city council meetings and eventually for district court uh, and for any workshops or anything that we need. And uh, that includes using the PA system, the Zoom equipment, and uh, the, the um, district Wi-Fi if our Wi-Fi doesn't reach all the way down to this room. Um, restrooms and uh, parking. Um, the okay, so that three hundred for all the above. Yeah, okay. Yeah, three hundred uh, is for all three of those items. Boardroom. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Questions? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. The ayes have it. So we'll get that contract signed with uh, Florence. Okay, moving on to resolution 2021-017, adoption of the FOIA policy. Do I have a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? I'll move that we put resolution 2021-017 on the floor for discussion. We have Second. Lynn made a motion. And Second. Ken Mills. Seconded the motion to put uh, resolution 2021-017 on the floor for discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Wes, would you read the motion or the uh, resolution? Yes. Why are you saying it's slow? Come on, hold it up. I have two copies here. I hope they're both the same. You want to read this one? Uh, follow along and tell me maybe okay. if. Okay. Resolution 2021 017. A resolution establishing a Freedom of Information Act FOIA policy for the City of Holiday Island. Whereas the City of Holiday Island is committed to handling its affairs in the most transparent manner so that its citizens may be fully informed of the workings of their city government and actions of their, their city officials. And whereas the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act of 1967 
and its subsequent amendments codified in ACA 2519-101 through 111 guarantees public access to public meetings and public records and whereas establishment of the FOIA policy for the city will assist the city in providing public access to public records in the most efficient manner possible as well as ensure compliance with Arkansas FOIA law and whereas the city's operation and the city's citizens will benefit from a policy and a documented standard process through which the city's public documents will be made available to its citizens and whereas publication of the city's FOIA policy on the city's website will assist the public in gaining knowledge and understanding of the city's FOIA policy and to obtain access to the public documents in the city government. Now, be it resolved by the City Council of Holiday Island that the City of Holiday Island does hereby adopt the Attached Freedom of Information Act FOIA policy, and this policy and a FOIA request form will be available on the city's website. Passed and approved by the City Council of Holiday Island, Arkansas, on this date of 03-23-2021. Okay, um, I believe that Linda had circulated this uh, FOIA policy, or I, pro I, I may have uh, circulated this FOIA policy for everyone to review at some point in the past. Has anyone, has everyone actually seen the policy? We actually discussed it at a previous meeting. Okay. So. Yes. Um, Linda, you want to talk about any updates or changes or anything that you've made? Well, the uh, only thing, yeah, I don't think I changed anything. I did uh, run it by Lanny Richmond at the Municipal League, and he read it and thought it was fine. Okay. And you uh, updated the phone numbers Mm -hmm. to the actual city phone numbers, mm -hmm. and you changed uh, town to city, and uh, otherwise it's pretty much the content is what it was before. Yeah. Okay, is there any other discussion on this policy or the posting of it? Move we approve, I approve resolution 2021-017. Ken Mills made the motion to approve resolution number 2021-017. Do I have a second? Second. Jerry Pittman seconds. Wes, would you call the roll? Yes. Councilman Dumas. Aye. Councilman Elwood. Aye. Councilmember Graves. Aye. Councilmember Mills. Aye. Councilmember Pittman. Aye. All, All in, favor, in favor, Mr. Mayor. Okay, the resolution passes, and Linda will be getting this uh, put up on the website for everybody to read and to utilize if they seek some information. Okay. Next thing I have on the list here, and I forgot to bring the do actual document with me, but... Um, Tana Van Cleve. Yeah, Tana Van Cleve. This is a, uh, the, 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 the topic on the agenda is uh, the possibility of having liquor by the drink in Holiday Island someday. Tana Van Cleve, who uh, is, uh, her family is the new owners of the Island Motel and what used to be the Back Porch Restaurant. They're doing extensive remodeling of all of that and intend to reopen the restaurant here in the relatively near future. And of course, uh, you know, we're all looking forward to a new business opening up in Holiday Island. Um, she wanted to know what the possibility would be of having a liquor by the drink ordinance in Holiday Island. I told her that I would bring it up for discussion, but I also told her that 
there would probably be a minimum of a six-month project to uh, research it, to um, you know, draft an ordinance, and to um, pass that ordinance, and then there'd be a 90-day waiting period after that before it would even be in effect. So I'm I'm living up to my commitment to bring it up for discussion. Um, she had information indicating that that if the county had previously voted to allow local option liquor by the drink, which Carroll County must have done because Eureka Springs has <laughs> liquor by the drink, well, you, then, you're... then... That's not necessarily so because Lick, Eureka Springs and Hot Springs are two entities within the state of Arkansas that have had that privilege far before liquor by the drink was allowed in the state. Okay. So they were grandfathered in? It was huh? They were grandfathered in, essentially? Well, it, it, they by statute, Hot Springs and Eureka Springs were allowed to have liquor by the drink when nobody else could. And um, so whether the you know our county has allowed it, because I can't think of another place in the county of in Carroll County that has liquor by the drink. Well, that's why I wanted to bring it up for discussion because yeah. I know nothing about it. I well, I when I was doing it. some research on statues or something, I came across this issue, and, and it mm -hmm. said, you know, what you just said. If if the county has permitted liquor by the drink, then there, you don't, there's not a big issue. If they have not, then you have to have an election. Right. That's what I thought mm -hmm. it would take. An election, if, if not the, if the if county countywide, at least citywide. Well, no. If if the, the what I read was if the county has allowed it, then we don't have to have an election. I get, and I don't know whether we have to have an ordinance or what. But mm -hmm. I, I I started trying to figure out where I read that, but I I, I will find it. Well, but the I, county doesn't. Doesn't the sidebar sell? Is it only beer and wine? That's just beer and wine, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm with Ken. I don't know of another place in Carroll County that sells liquor by well, the drink other you know, than white, You know, why does Yelp do it like they do? You know, I mean, because it's it's as a private club. Mm -hmm. That was all they could do for. Well, for many years in Arkansas, they they were they could. You could buy a membership to any restaurant. Yeah, they called it a club. But you know, but you could. Like but that. I mean, you yeah. could not have an open bar. No. The yeah. only two, the, there were two exceptions, and that was Hot Springs and Eureka Springs. At the Ox, you have to be a member or a guest. Correct? Huh? At the Ox Club, you have to be a member or a guest. Right. Well, I know, but I, that's yeah. it's a private club. Right. So because it's, it's not a private club. It's yeah. not an open bar. Even even as a guest, the guest is not allowed to purchase the beverages. The um, member has to purchase so. the beverages. I think the first thing we need to find out is if if the county is has voted, you know, for open, you know allowing liquor by the drink. Because if is if they haven't, then you, you, what I re what I read is you had to have a, an election within the city. Yeah. To allow it. So if the county does not permit it, we would be wasting our effort to even work on it. Well, no, he's saying he thinks maybe we could have it. I, I think you'd have to have oh. a, a citywide election. election. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to find out. Um, I mean, there, so there's a lot of research. We need, need legal done. assistance. Yeah, we need, uh, yeah we need and that's, that. that's that's one of the reasons why I didn't jump right on it. I figured that this was if. If the council thought it was worth pursuing, this is something we could run by well, I, I, our attorney. I, I once think we have yeah. I think it's an issue that will come up again. So uh, I, I think, think we need to know. We need to know. disadvantage for any of our businesses. We need to at yeah. least look at it. I've, I've had I've had business people from up you know up by the commercial area of the park uh, ask the same question. Not not as formally as Tana has asked. But there's there's more interest in it, 
here, and it puts Holiday Island's uh, tourist business at a significant disadvantage, not being able to sell liquor by the drink that, like. Um, that makes it important to find totally the answer. Totally agree. So, okay, I think then my take is, my takeaway is that there is some interest in it, so at some point um, uh, we'll, we'll do our own research and we'll ask our attorney once we've appointed him to, uh, to uh, give us uh, an opinion on it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like, I, I'll volunteer to do some research on that because I would consider that economic development. I would appreciate it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I would appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Find out from the county. Would you? Yeah. From, from, from the county. I'm trying to find that law that I was reading. I is it, I I read this. I read a statute on it, and I don't I don't know where. <laughs> I may have because I spent a lot of time just going through, uh, you know, that wiki thing, whatever it is that you know, the, or you just go down to the municipal codes and read them all out. Yeah. I, 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 Thinking off the top of my head, but I think the law is if the county allows it, right. the city can opt out to, to to not allow liquor by the drink. There's a statute that I found. It's three nine two zero three. That's on this subject. You might want to check that one out. That may have been the one I read. I don't know, Linda. I can't remember. Uh, All right, well, I'll, I'll look at that, and Ken will too. And we'll but I was going to do that when that came up, but I never got that far. Again, I, I started <clears throat> looking for it, but I never found it again. Mr. Mayor, I'll comment from my experience, usually in restaurants and that have a bar, is that it's it's this business that helps them stay in business. Mm -hmm. There's not that much money in the food itself. Yeah. It used to be that way years ago that the restaurants broke even on the food and made their money on the bar. With them clamping down on drunken driving and with the, you know, the limit being 0 .08 or something like that, um, you know, people going out and having six martinis with dinner yeah, is <laughs> it. kind of a thing of the past. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, you know, it, it's still something that tourists, like to do. They like to have a cocktail. And, and before there's any misconception, we don't know if she's talking about a bar. I mean, she may just be no. talking about Yeah, I don't think she was talking no, about No, I, I don't either. And so I didn't I mean this, yeah. but I mean to, to have the I mean, I don't think go available. belly up to the bar there. I think it's for yeah. dining purposes. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't remember what the, what term now. It might have been, some, I thought she said open bar, but, but that can mean anything. Yeah. I, I would love for us to be able to expedite this as much as possible, getting this settled. Yeah. Well, I think she went ahead. I, I haven't talked to her lately about this. I talked to her last Friday, but I didn't talk to her about this. But I think given the time frame, I, I told her it would be six months at the minimum. And uh, I think based on that, she went ahead and applied for her beer and wine license. Yeah. She just wanted to do it all at one time if this was something that could be done quick, quickly. I think beer and wine probably is a lot of exceptions here. That's her decision. Okay. In Carroll County. I looked it up. Uh, moving on then to uh, front entrance project. Um, this is again just for discussion only. I, Figured I might as well update people on the fact that um, the Board of Commissioners, High said Board of Commissioners, voted in one of their meetings, recent meetings, to form a committee to study what to do with the front entrance. And, um, you know, everybody knows that the guard shack has been removed. That was a on again, off again, contro controversial thing. The Board of Commissioners, uh, probably three years ago already, when Linda and I were on the board, uh, voted to remove it. And then it, we got talked out of it. <laughs> and, and now it's gone. So we've, you know, that, that decision has been made. But now there's a hole there and there are Significant problems with that with that island up there. It's incredibly high maintenance. 
and um, and the maintenance falls on just a very small handful of people that that take care of it every year. So um, and then some people think that the sign um, is has historical value because it ties into all of the other architecture and stuff up there and some people think that we need something modern. Uh, now that we're a city, we want to project a more modern image. So since there were a lot of opinions floating around, they, uh, Lawrence did form the committee. Uh, I'm on the committee. Um, there's one BOC member on the committee, and then the rest of it is just made up of, of um, Holiday Island residents. And there's some talent on the on the uh, committee. There's two new people uh, in town here that volunteered and uh, they have design experience and things like that. Mickey Finefield sat in on the first uh, meeting and of course Mickey is on the head of the planning commission and he's also an architect. So there's, there's talent on the committee and um, we've just had one meeting and uh, brainstormed a whole bunch of things and kind of set some boundaries so that we didn't end up with project creep, you know, starting out to, you know, can we uh, put up a new sign and ending up wanting to reroute all the streets in Holiday Island or something like that, because we did get on a little bit of a tangent on uh, traffic and stuff like that. So if anybody has any any up any uh, input on that, anything that they would like to see up there, um, you know, you can let me know as a member of the committee. Uh, my main interest is that whatever we end up with, that it be virtually zero maintenance, because you know, Holiday Island lives by its lives and dies basically by its volunteers. There's no money in the budget. Uh, for a high said or for the city to hire a uh, gardener to take care of all of the flower beds around the community. So if volunteers don't take it upon themselves to do it, then they just become overgrown weed patches and it really looks bad. So um, like I said, if anybody has any ideas of what they'd like to see up there, or if you're an artist and you want to make a artist, you know, rendering of what you think a nice sign would look like, um, by all means, get it to me. <laughs> artist, yeah, right. <laughs> I failed that in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other new business that didn't make the agenda, even though we didn't talk about it when we approved the agenda? Uh, I have one. Uh, I think we need to prepare a resolution to adopt all previously approved resolutions naming Town of Holiday Island as City of Holiday Island resolutions. We need to do that formally. Okay. Are you volunteering? Yes, sir. That'll teach you. I agree. I thought about the same thing, and uh, that would make it official. So we can have that on the next meeting agenda. Okay. If there's no other business to discuss, we can move up. On to public comments, three minute time limit. Linda, do we have any hands being raised? I see no hands yet. If you want to make a comment, raise your hand or unmute yourself and speak up. All right, I'll move on to council member comments. If anybody raises their hand, we can double back and, and uh, catch it. Any uh, council member comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. I, you know, since we, I hadn't gone any, you and I had talked about, you know, on the ward issue, you know, addressing that. I 
postponed that waiting until we actually got the confirmation that we were mm -hmm. to, but I will start on that this uh, well I'll pick it up and I'll go over and talk to Connie to get some clarification okay yeah that I probably should make that official that Ken uh, has volunteered to look at uh, ward boundaries and stuff I had sketched something up you know a long time ago already and uh, did my own rough estimate on population based uh, on number of buildings in uh, in particular units and stuff but Ken's going to talk to Connie about um, you know how how legal the description has to be for the, the ward boundaries the, and stuff the examples that I have seem re really simple so <laughs> it's probably not yeah. going to be that easy I'm hoping but, that we uh, uh, but yeah. I mean it, if we have to it the way the way I perceive it and I don't think Ken disagrees and I don't know that anybody would disagree is since Holiday Island is set up in units it's very easy to say Unit well, one, two, three, four, five, seven, and nine are in Ward One. Unit this and that are in Ward Two, because um, the the unit block and lot is part of the legal description of every property in Holiday Island. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very easy to determine who is in what ward. Um, is that enough for the election commission to be able to I, decide? I what the precincts are and everything, or do they need a GIS map that's got well, the boundaries and everything? The, the, the example of the ordinance I had, you know, from the, I think I got it from the Municipal League, uh, just s says you send this ordinance to the county clerk, I think, with, and it in there says, you know, the boards be established via the enclosed map mm -hmm. so, so we may be it just has to be definitive enough so that the election yeah. commission knows who's in what ward right and if we and if uh, we use units and streets but, yeah. you know, so. interestingly enough there was a bill being floated down in Little Rock and I haven't heard lately if it died or if it's it, still it alive. hasn't died yet as far as I've heard where they uh, they're trying to get the law changed to where the the election commission is responsible for establishing the ward boundaries mm -hmm. and not the city mm -hmm. and I, I don't really know why it seems to me that that's a well, trying to depoliticize it yeah or, so, or politicize uh, it. Well, that's right <laughs> I don't know Could be either way. <laughs> although the I think the election commission has to be equal numbers of Representative there's, there's, there's a majority. Party. There's a majority. If it's five, it's it's three and two. Yep. There is a majority in the election okay, commission. Well, then right. it's questionable as to whether or not it's, they're trying to depoliticize yeah. it or politicize it. it. I don't know. It's primarily within Carroll County. It's normally been Democratic. I think. Mean. So anyway, not anymore. <laughs> uh, as of right now, it's still our job. So we uh, we will work on. I, establishing I, ward boundaries until somebody tells us that it's not our job and anymore. I have some data by next meeting. Mm -hmm. The Municipal League is strongly in favor of keeping it in the city's right. hands. Yeah. Um, um, I, would, I would hope that by the time we get to the point where we would have to pass the ordinance in order to meet the time line for the next election I would hope that we'll be out of the pandemic and everything else and we would be able to have a have public a meeting, public meeting yeah. about the wards I think people would want oh, yeah. an input into who's all in their ward and uh, make sure that it's set up fair and equitable okay uh, Mr. any other council member comments I do um, April 1st will mark our second quarter of our uh, existence and I'd like to make certain that we begin work by introducing our um, planning document to the council members and start with that okay. as soon as we can uh, I, I you know after we, we get 
these other things out of the way, we really can get an attorney on board that we need to really look at the planning. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would feel more comfortable doing that after, you know, after we get an attorney. Well, I don't think you're talking about adopting the planning. No, uh, Just, get, it, get it in the hands of the council so they right. can be reading about what responsibilities we have and yeah. what's in right. front of us to get it done. Yeah. Lynn has done a tremendous amount of work on this, and it is time for us to start sharing that and uh, deciding what the next step is. I still don't see any hands raised or anyone wanting to comment. Here. That's okay. good. Uh, one last comment I'm going to make. Uh, before we meet again, it's very, very likely that the governor will drop the mask mandate. And the way he has presented it so far is that he's going to remove the mandate, but he hopes people still wear masks because uh, he feels that common sense should prevail over mandates. And um, so um, I'm, I'm not going to make any proclamation about what, you know, what the mask mandate or lack thereof is in Holiday Island. I'm still going to let Lawrence take the lead in what um, all the district um, facilities are going to do. And, um, you know, if it, if, if, it, if the governor is going to let it up to individual businesses to determine whether or not they want their patrons wearing masks, then, uh, then I'm going to go along with that. I'm not going to, you know, take on any kind of a campaign. I would encourage people to continue to wear masks. The pandemic is not over. Uh, but... I don't think that um, the city is in a position to mandate any kind of mask, use, mask usage right now. And I kind of seriously doubt if any other city in Arkansas will either. They will, they will follow the governor's lead and ask people to continue to wear masks, but not cause anyone to suffer any penalties if they don't. All right, uh, our next regular meeting is when is it? Third Tuesday of April. <laughs> so the third Tuesday of April oh, yeah. would be the first Tuesday is the oh, yeah. 6th. Yeah, it should be the 20th. All right, same time, same station. I don't see anything on the horizon that would cause us to need a special meeting prior to that, but uh, if anything comes up, we can always call a special meeting. Any other announcements? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Who made that? Linda, Jerry. Jerry. Jerry moved to adjourn. I'll second. Linda seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.